This is the plaintiff, Jamal Forbes. He says he and the defendant dated for a few months, and the extremely jealous woman tried to run him over with her car in a fit of insecure rage. She also ran his car with her car because she thought he was cheating on her. His car is now grossly damaged to the tune of $4,100, and that's just what he's suing for today. This is the defendant, Lakeisha Graves. She says her cheating boyfriend of three years is lying by claiming she damaged his car by ramming it with hers. The plaintiff's just trying to be nasty by filing this bogus lawsuit because she filed criminal assault charges against him and also got an order of protection from him because he is the one with anger issues. She's accused of going on a demolition derby. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $4,790 for impound fees, a car note, and emotional distress. All parties, please raise your right hand. You see it? Come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, okay, Jamal Forbes. How you doing, Your Honor? You are suing Lakeisha Grace? Yes, ma'am. Okay, for $4,100 that you say she owes you in damages to your 2004 Monte Carlo. You have a counterclaim against him for $4,790 for money that you say he owes you for getting your car impounded. Tell me what's going on. Um, yes, well, basically what the, the situation was where one night um, me and my friend had went to a casino, but we left from her house, and I guess she was calling my phone, calling my phone, calling my phone. And, you know, you don't answer the phone while you're gambling. So, you know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, Perhaps you don't answer the phone while gambling. Yeah, Go I ahead. I answer the phone while I'm gambling. So, um, basically, long story short, um, the person that she, that I went with had her vehicle. and Had I, her vehicle? Yes, yeah, we was out with her vehicle, and then we went back to her house. So, okay, what time did you leave? Um, probably around, like, 4 or 5 o'clock. In the afternoon? Yes, in the afternoon. Okay, what time did you bring her car back? Probably around, like, 7. Okay, and did she know you were taking... Her yes, car? of course. Okay, and who is this? Uh, when you say the other person had her car, who is the other person? It was her relative. All right, and then you came home and in three hours she was blowing up your phone? She was blowing up my phone. She basically thought I was out with another female. Doing... Oh, so she didn't know you were going gambling with her cousin? No, she didn't know. Oh, she knew okay. we were just hanging out. She just said, you guys go out, do what you guys are going to do, and come back and... Okay. So, um, all right, so you bring the car back, and what happens? I bring the car back, so when we go upstairs... Um, she starts arguing with me. How long had you been dating? Probably around like four or five months. According to you, how long had you been dating? It's, it's been longer than that, definitely. How long had you been dating? Consist consistently for about, um, I would say, a strong nine months, so. All right, so now he, you come home and what happens? After I come to the house, um, basically, she starts coming at me about what I was doing, this, that, this, that, to the third. So I went downstairs and got in my car. I just sat down because really it didn't have a tag on it. It had just came out the paint shop from a previous accident that somebody else had got in my car into. And it was on the right side. So when um, she did that, we started arguing, whatever. And then I looked like I was going to back out to leave. She backed her car up like three, four times and rammed it into my car. I have the pictures. Wait, she did what? Yeah, I was in the driver's side of my car. And like, she backed her car up like three or four times and rammed it into my car. It broke the window on my car and it bent the A-frame on the car. Wait, she rammed into your car yes. three or four times? Where? In the driver's seat? On the driver's side. She... Driver's side where? Right at you? Right at you. <laughs> three or four times? Three or four times. Um, at what speed? Probably, I would, it wasn't a, a, a good amount of speed. It Did went... it dent the car door? Yes, do you I have the have... pictures? Yes, I do. And you can see like the, the red paint. You see the red paint from the red Camaro all over the car. Did you do that? No. <laughs> Jamal so uh, I just want to start off by saying this, Your Honor, like, for the record, I'm so over it. I'm over it. I forgive, I've forgiven him for everything that he put me through. Just standing here next to him is, is killing me. I just lost a family member, and Jamal knows from the time, excuse me, from the time that I started dating him, all I did was help him. And I told him it was behalf of his daughter. Okay. And what he's doing right now, I understand that he's hurt, but I paid for his car to be fixed with my check when I came back from Texas after I ran away from him. I left Miami to go to Texas because I didn't want to deal with the issue of not being with him and all of the stuff that he had going on with the other girl. 
So I relocated. Like, I uprooted my whole life. And I went to Texas and took on another job opportunity. When I got to Texas, three days later, I found I was pregnant from him. And in Texas, you can't get an abortion, God forgive me, you can't do that in the state of Texas without having either a second opinion or, like, they give you a runaround with the cost value to get it done. So being that I was sick, I wasn't able to work. So I was up there maybe three weeks, and I ended up having to resign from my job because I was sick in and out of the hospital. I called Jamal. I said, Jamal, I'm coming back to Miami. Can you help me pay for, um, pay for the abortion so I can at least try to go back to my other job at University of Miami? He said, okay, well, why, why, why didn't you tell me you were coming down here? You think you slick. You have something up your sleeve. I said, well, what can I possibly have in my sleeve if I'm telling you I'm coming home, that I'm sick? He was like, oh, no, you have something up your sleeve. You're being sneaky. So long story short, he did not help me pay for the abortion, which was Partially, the agreement, if I was to conceive, he would be there. He did not show up to me, with me at the abortion clinic, and he promised me he would be there if I made that decision. So I understand he's talking about a car, but even my mom, my mom had to fill out a statement because she worked for the state. She knows that I used to take him back and forth to work since that boy got in a wreck with his car on April 1st. Because we thought it was a joke. We were coming from the club, uh, Take One, which is his favorite club. We were coming from Take One at April Fool's Day. He got in a car accident. The, the guy said, uh, Andre, who was the car's registered in, it's not even registered in Jamal's name. He ran the stop sign and said somebody hit him. So I took Jamal over there. I said, well, this can't be true. Like, I just resigned from my job. I only have this amount of money to move to Texas. Okay, well, here, here's what I can give you. I can give you what I have. Why and would you give him anything? Because I was with him. Yeah, I but was, you were moving to Texas. Yeah, and you know, that's and my... And you were moving to Texas because you weren't with him. It, no, but I moved to Texas to run away from him. But when he needed me, and that's, that's just my flaw. When he needed me, I was there. Like, I couldn't turn my back on him. Did you ram into him. his car out of anger because you felt ram, like he was I a horrible person? I did not ram into his car. He filed this even after the fact. Like, he, I feel like he's being vindictive because my police report was already filed prior. He didn't know that I filed a police report from when he pulled out a gun on me. He didn't know that. Wait, when did he pull out a gun on you? You called the police on him because he pulled a gun out on you? Yeah, which was a stolen gun from the person who was fixing his car. What happened with that police report? He has a pending case right now for aggravated assault with a firearm. Is that accurate? Yes, that's accurate. <laughs> Did you call the police the night that this happened? No, I didn't because of the fact that, okay, yeah, we were trying to get back on good terms. I, and she sent me... Yeah, it's, I, I, I don't know about you, but I see somebody <laughs> trying to kill me as kind of the end of trying to get back on good terms. But When I look at this, when she, it's when she, so severe. How are you not injured? No, because when she hit the car, like, she wasn't 20, 30 miles per hour going to the car. She backed up. Slowly, five, 10 miles per hour going into the car. And I had time to move to the passenger seat. So when she moved and backed up for enough for me to get out the car, I climbed out the driver window. Like, okay. Were you cheating on her? Is that why she's so crushed? Why is she so crushed? It was a relationship that I was in previous before with her that she knew about, that I told her about. And I told her, it's on you if you want to deal with it or not. Because I don't even know what that means. Are you saying that, when, that she was the other woman? I was in a relationship with a woman for five years, right? And I came to her and I told her, okay, yeah, I'm in a relationship, this is, this is that, this is that, but the relationship is not going as well as it's supposed to go. So if you decide to deal with it on your own conscience, that's on you. If you don't want to deal when, with it- Is any of it on you? No, if she wants to deal with me- I heard you, is any of it on you? Do you have a conscience? Yes, I do. Okay, because you're kind of telling me how, you know, hey, it was all out there that I was going to be a cheater. And no, she it's not. It was, I wasn't in a relationship with her. Are you we in was... that rela No, you were in a relationship with the other person who you are apparently disrespecting. That other person, are you still dating her? No. Okay. And... We're, good. we're still good friends, but I'm not dating her. Right. Does she know that you were... <laughs> do, does she know that you were stepping out on her with her, according to you? Yeah, she does. Okay. Did you know that he was in a prior relationship? I actually found out on Valentine's Day. He oh, told me. Oh, wow. um, happy Valentine's Day. I know. Okay. I went. All right, Miss Grace, Miss Grace. <laughs> okay. Did you ram his car? I, have, I did not. Okay. She says that this was done by your friend when your friend crashed the car. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I have the pictures from um, when my car got repaired from my friend. Mm -hmm. When he crashed it, the dent, the dent that my friend did, it was on the right-hand side. 
That's do you the, have a picture of yes, the den on the right hand side? Yes, I do. I have it Let after it was repaired. Yes, I do. Let me see. And also, Yana. No, and also wait. Okay. I'm about to see something pretty important. Okay. I'm about to see the dent the friend made on the other side of the car, and then the dent here where you're trying to kill somebody. No, definitely. If you did do this. No. So that's the bondo on the right hand side. What happened to your car? Because that's the subject of your lawsuit. Right. He um. Him and his friend, which is, which is my cousin, which is his best friend. He didn't mention that. Um, they were in a car. Um, I, Jamal was mad that I went uh, away with another guy friend. Um, like where, I said, Where'd yeah, you go? To West Palm Beach. To do what? To do me. <laughs> <laughs> I take it you mean after you broke up? Yeah, because yeah, he, he, he was basically um, ordered to to get his stuff previous time. Like, Jamal hasn't been in my house for weeks before all of this happened. Okay, he, is this after or before? This is before this everything. Stuff. This is way before that. I don't know how that happened. Okay, so what happens at West Palm Beach? How okay, did your car get? Okay, I was with my friend, and this was around June 28th. When I get back in town, my car is missing. Okay, I filed a police report. So, he basically... <laughs> Stole my car. When they got arrested, it was all three of them in the car and two guns in the glove compartment. Ironically, Jamal walked from that situation. Okay? Now, this is a statement coming from my cousin who was arrested, who beat the case and got out, and the other gentleman that was in the car. Jamal said the guns were theirs. But prior to that, like I told you before, when I filed the gun, it's, it, it's crazy, Your Honor. Ms. But Grace, here's my question. How did they get arrested in your car? Because you filed a stolen police report? Right. Okay, so they get arrested for stealing your car. No, they got arrested because they did a crime in my car and I was out of town. What was the crime they robbery. did? Robbery. Okay, so they all got arrested for robbery. What except kind of? Him. Except him. Right. The detective just brought they, me in. Did you and your friends and or just your friends get arrested for a robbery in her car? I was never on the scene. That's did, why I did walked. Did they get you arrested for a robbery? They did. Somebody else is driving. I'm not even driving. Do you driving. have any text between you and her regarding this crash? This crash? Oh, I have something where, not a text message, but I wrote on Instagram and asked her, okay, what are you gonna do about my car? And what did she say? She told me, she said, oh, um, what car? I don't know what car you're talking about. Tell the female that you was laying up with to fix your car. Exactly. <laughs> I fixed it the first time. You fixed it the first time? The first time when it wasn't my fault, I took my last, so I didn't want to leave Miami with him not being able to go to work and take so care of his So he's cheating daughter. on you, he's stepping around you, you're in such pain that you're gonna move away and then you spend money to fix the car that someone else broke. Right, because he was crying to and me about- And so if this is, if this, if that's what you say is this damage. So if that's the case, then that got fixed. So what's he in court for? If that was this damage. Uh, I mean, that's basically uh, the, what I'm trying to figure out. Is it? Is, is he really want to Is it see? really what you're trying to figure out? Yeah, I am. Because Tell I, me about what happened with your car. It gets impounded because it was used in a robbery by your cousin, right, who got charged. So okay, there were my impound fees. So how is car. it his fault if he was never charged and he wasn't driving the car? He stole the spare key to my car. Okay, he wasn't involved in the robbery. Okay, well, how... Do you have any evidence that he was involved in the robbery? No, I don't. Okay, I just your car his... got impounded because somebody used it in a robbery. What evidence do you have that he was involved in the robbery? I don't have any evidence. Okay. Um, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, man. Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So if you were dating somebody for a while and they got really mad in the middle of an argument and they pulled the gun on you and then said, oh, I'm sorry, would you have them prosecuted? Yes, absolutely. That <laughs> should be locked up. I probably can't say that. No, but you said it twice. What do you say? <laughs> Absolutely. I think it's completely unnecessary. It's definitely unnecessary. Would you have somebody prosecuted or would you ever excuse them? No, I think it, it causes an effect to take care of them because you're dealing with humans and humans. You send one to another group of humans, none of us is perfect. So I hope, thank like God he didn't shoot me, but I believe in the power of God. So. Okay. Okay. Going inside the courtroom. Where's the car now? I had to get rid of it. I had to get rid of it. It was total. It's in a shop on 95th Street, Your Honor. How it's... do you know where his car is? <laughs> Your Honor, if How you... do you know where his car is? Because I got to tell you, you got to tuck in your crazy just a little. <laughs> okay, this I is no just... way to live. Yeah, I just recently sold my car. I mean, I transferred. I gave over the title and everything. He just Did told... you end up getting it fixed or no? I can't... With that car, if you get it fixed, you have to get a whole other body so for what, it. So what did you end up selling it for? 
$600. Wow. 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 I believe you crashed this car. I don't know why people would want to live in this kind of a situation. Um, I hope it's over. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you could not call the police when someone's trying to kill you. Because I don't care how many times you say, I was able to scoot over and she was only going five miles an hour. Look at what happened to the car. You're right. The Blue Book value of your car in good condition is $2,600. You've already gotten $600 for it on the sale. So the most you would be able to sue for would be $2,000. I am ordering her to pay you the $2,000. On your counterclaim against him, I cannot award you a penny because you have no evidence that he was involved in the robbery. He didn't get charged with it. Um, there is no evidence that he was involved in the robbery. And the impounding was because of the robbery. Sue the right person for that, the people who got arrested in the robbery. But the person who you, you know, who does this had a lot of rage. Um, it would be funny if it weren't so dangerous. Um, it would be just a little bit in a waiting to exhale kind of way funny, right? <laughs> um, but you could have hurt him. And it's crazy. I and know. crazy's not good for you. Okay. He's gone, he's done, he's out. But, you know, think about you're young, very young, and think about your future and think about whether you want to be around somebody that brings out these bad things, okay? Because I know you did that, all right? I'm ordering you to pay $2,000 for the repair of that car on your counterclaim for the reasons I've already explained, zero. That's my verdict. Good luck, Thanks. folks. All right, pull side, pull side. Well, let's find out what the defendant has to say here coming out of this courtroom. You must have a lot going through your mind right now. Yeah. Um, it's funny that the victim always looks like something else. But, I mean, like I said, I've forgiven him. And I just want to go home to my family. Okay? You forgive him for all, every, all this Everything, story? Everything. The abortion, the using me, I forgive him wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that you, you still want him in your life no, somewhere? I never did. I always told him I wanted what's best for him and his daughter. Mm-hmm. All right, so are you done with him? Have you kicked him out of your life completely at this point? Yeah, he's been out for quite some time. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank All you. right, follow Officer McIntosh around the corner this way. Let's see what the plaintiff has to say. As he comes out here, what, what's, uh, what's going through your mind at this point? Um, I mean, it wasn't exactly what I expected, but, you know, it's something to get me back to where I need to get my... Do you have any remorse for the way you treated this young woman in any, any of your doings with her? Um, no, not really, because I put it out on the table from... From the beginning, so if you chose to deal with it, you chose to deal with it. All right, Harvey. Okay, I mean, this is a truism. If there is physical violence in your relationship, end it. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.